I set myself a challenge. To survive 100 in-game days in Fallout 3, but with a twist. I'm a pyromaniac. Only using a few mods to make the game look prettier and overhauling the game to add in new content, increased enemy damage and harsher survival. This is what happens when you spend 100 days in Fallout 3. I started off making my character and naming him Firebug. Finalizing my character through a terminal, I opted for a somewhat vanilla special stats and focusing on skills in big guns, explosives and melee weapons and then jumped into the capital wasteland. The day begins. I dropped all my main weapons as I'm not allowed to use any weapons that isn't to do with fire or explosives. So I made my way down towards Megaton and made a pit stop at Springvale where I acquired my first usable weapon. Three hull grenades. Ah, it's better than nothing, I guess. This also leveled me up for some reason too, which I won't complain about, and I decided to choose the charge perk, which means that I am now able to sprint with weapons in my hand. Upon arrival in Megaton, I wandered my way towards the local pub, where I met the least patriotic American. God bless the USA and nowhere else. Okay, mate. In the tavern where a well-dressed man waved at me to discuss blowing up the bomb in town. So I told him he was crazy and instead focused on delivering Lucy's letter to Arafu. But before leaving, I wanted to check out the local trader, which was a bad idea because Moira has got to be one of the most annoying characters in the game. However, it paid off and I was able to get some free armor. Passing by Springvale, I walked into a home of a raider. Not that great when you only have three grenades. So I ran into another house nearby for shelter, where a woman was seeking refuge from her debts. I fixed her debt issue by basically stealing some caps from her and then left the house. No, I didn't just get scared there. It seems that the iBot dealt with my problem, which I'm very grateful for. So I headed on towards Arafu. Ah! Along the way, I made a short stop in Big Town, where a bunch of depressed adults live with barely no supplies. Then disaster struck. Oh sh! Guys, watch it, watch it, watch it! How many rockets does this guy have? My god! I'm really hoping for that car to explode. Dude, move back! I'm gonna try and say- Ow! Dude, move back! Okay, need a little bit of health left. Oh, he's only on two dots. This should do it. With only three grenades at my disposal, I miraculously survived the threat nursing my wounds with a stim pack and did one final push towards Arafu. I looted my local convenience store for some refreshing beverages and headed to Arafu where I was stopped by an old man who nearly blew me up. He told me to check out the locals. The first one was crazy, the other one looked unwell and the other one seemed pretty scared. But getting pretty late, I needed to sleep so I um, evicted the bodies and slept in that bed. Fancy, I know. On the dawn of the second day, I had a drink and munched on some lovely wasteland food before I went to go speak to the old man about the locals. He directed me towards the subway station, urging me to investigate the gang that is harassing them. So off I went. Blocking my way were, um, some chemists that needed some sugar bombs from me. And in return, I was able to get some sweet caps. I agreed and pursued down into the tunnel. I was quickly reminded that I'm really bad at close quarters fighting as I only had just a few grenades. So I got the dealers to come and help me with the Myalurks. The station was riddled with traps, from bear traps to prams concealing mines. So I left the area briefly and leveled up again. I focused on melee and chose the tackle perk, which allowed me to push enemies who are less stronger than me. Eventually, I did find human life who actually stopped me from entering this location. So I threw some caps his way and he helped me inside. I tripped while sprinting up the stairs. Yeah, that, that's going to happen quite a lot in this video. I spoke with Vance and tried convincing him to bring back Lucy's brother, but unfortunately he didn't bite. Ah. So I dealt with it the only way I knew how. Just going to casually throw some mines down. There we go. I knew it. I know you're around that corner. I know it. 
the last guy guarding the gate really did some decent damage towards me, but it was worth it to take his combat armor. Navigating back to Arafu, I noticed the guys were pointing guns at me, so with fear I ran the other way, and luckily the caravan group were there to come and save me. I brought some stim packs from them as I really needed some healing supplies, ate my meal of the day in the rain, and then had to clear out the remaining locals. Nothing personal, of course. On day three, I headed back to Megaton to work out what I needed to do next. I had something to eat real quick and then headed towards Moriarty Saloon, where I spoke about where my father went. I passed the skill check, extracting some valuable information that my father has ventured to the GNR building deep in the DC ruins. Recognizing that I probably wouldn't live in the DC ruins for five minutes, so I thought it was time to get a companion. With my karma leaning towards more of the naughtier side, I wanted to hire Jericho in Megaton. He did want a thousand caps though, which I clearly didn't have, so I did one bad deed. Morning. And after trading with my favorite person, I was able to get 1k caps. Jericho agreed and we set off to GNR. We stumbled upon a skirmish at a local supermarket where we started hearing shooting. It was some raiders fighting something. I tried to be cautious about it, but I thought it would be more fun just to charge in instead. Alright Jericho, I want to be really stuck. Oh no, did that make a noise? I think it made a noise. No, <laughs> this isn't how I wanted it to go. Oh, mini nuke. Oh, and grenades as well. Oh, don't mind if I do. Ow. Ow, Jericho. You got it? Ah, oh, good man, good man. Needing refuge, I went back to Arafu and slept in my favorite bed. The following day found me back at Megaton where I would sell off a few items and I got a welding mask for Jericho to make our appearance matching as a team. And we resumed our trek towards the GNR building. I saw this Brotherhood of Steel blimp in the air for some reason, probably one of the mods that I've installed, but I thought was pretty cool. And finally reached a subway station where a map is telling me to go. I encountered my first super mutant, well, it was supposed to be, which included a bunch of feral ghouls as well, which I quickly removed. We reached the surface where I got my first taste of the desolation of DC. Say what you want about this game, but this can be absolutely beautiful sometimes. We walked towards the big relay tower before I heard super mutants. They looked like Jericho really cleaned them up. Not only that, but the Brotherhood of Steel was here. Sentinel Lions, the leader of the Lions Pride, told us off just existing around here and told us to tag along to the GNR building. She spoke to the others that the Super Mutants have completely cornered the GNR building and that they needed to push. Wonder if I can throw... There we go. Ooh. <laughs> I looted a fat man from a Brotherhood of Steel soldier, which included some mini nukes. And while I was getting some cool shots, this happened. Ooh. Ooh, now he a big boy. One, two. Okay, I think we got him. He's still alive? Okay, well, this will do it. There we go. Is he... St He's still alive? Okay. This, this, this has to be it. This has to be it. That... <laughs> there he goes. After it was safe, I went to go speak to 3Dog. And all the information I wanted from him was just to ask where my father was. But unfortunately, with a failed skill check, he wanted me to fix the relay dish for him instead, deep in the DC ruins. I swear that everyone's just trying to kill me off at this point. After taking a moment to unwind with a drink, I made my way towards the Museum of Technology, where the relay dish is. After some underground beatings, we got to a part of the city filled with ruins. I think I took a wrong turn, but I kind of wanted to have a look around anyway, which wasn't exactly the best idea. Uh, raiders? 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 You coming in? Yes, good man, good man. I don't want you to be out here. Nice, Derek. I really want you into cover, man. See if I can. Right, we got one. We got one. Jericho, stop moving in so harsh. Jericho. Jericho! Oh no! <laughs> go! I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. Go, 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 go. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. Guess I'll go in here real quick. I'll get out the way. 
to hide in here for a second. God damn it, Jericho. I needed you for longer. I need you to survive for longer. I don't really know what to do here. Like, do I leave or... Oh, I might give it a go. I I'm going to have to do something, right? No, okay. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, so I basically used every single med that I can find that will reduce damage resistance. Okay, so I've got a mine. And I'm going to throw it straight outside and just close the door as soon as I can. I think that's the best bet I've got. There we go. I cannot see a single thing. <laughs> oh, this is bad. So this is what Velma feels like when she loses her glasses. Okay, where is he? Where's my boy? Can't see sh Oh, there he is. Come on, buddy. God, I'm, God damn it, there's more raiders. Raiders, you're not having his body. You're not having his loot. I had to mine up the place to ensure our safety. And without any warning, I passed out. When I regained consciousness, I saw that time passed and nobody has attacked us. But it seemed like Jericho wanted to take a dirt nap forever, so it was time to leave him here. He kept me alive for only just a few days, but it really showed how dangerous it was in the DC ruins. I regained my composure and checked out my surroundings. A raider is still shooting in my direction. So before leaving, I had a drink. Not exactly what I wanted to drink there. And then sneaked around to the side in, and into the subway station, avoiding the raiders. Oh, hello there. Bro, how does that even happen? What the f- Due to my lack of food and proper sleep, I was getting weaker, meaning that I couldn't carry as much. So I had to line the load and I continued until I found a bed to sleep in. It was quite lucky to find a bed like this in the metro station. Once replenished, I retrieved my belongings and continued through the underground. I tripped over and a raider came to finish me off. By the grace of the Nuka gods, his gun kept jamming, giving me a time to get up and attack him. It's stuff like this is why I love the game. Arriving at the Museum of History, I popped my head up to see a bunch of super mutants and they were approaching me so I had to run into the museum and in the museum I discovered a bunch of ghouls living there seeking for a doctor who treated my wounds and I attempted once again to take on the super mutants <laughs> I basically gave up on the super mutants for today and instead wanted to speak to a few locals. This one guy, Mr. Crowley, who basically wanted me to kill four ghoul haters with a shot to the head. I mean, caps are caps, right? And so I accepted. I also got a free haircut. Cool. And then after a few hours in the bar, I headed to sleep. Today was the day that I kicked some super mutant ass in the Museum of Technology and get that dish for three dog. The super mutants outside seem to have moved, which I'm very happy about as it gave me the opportunity to blow some chunks off. Ran towards the building and opened the door. Oh, hello lads. Don't mind me. But luckily with all the grenades that I have and my trusty sword, I should be able to get through. I reached the Virgo dish and put it into my invisible pocket before leaving to admire the beauty of the planetarium. Running towards the Washington Monument, I installed the dish and my duties were now fulfilled. Finishing off the day with a nice drink and a nap at the Museum of History, but before going back, I had to do one more thing. At 11pm, I left the area to go towards the entrance where I saw my target. Yesterday, I spoke to a bartender who wanted me to end his competition. So I hid behind a wall and I waited. I think that will do it. Nobody seemed to have heard either, so just a plus in my book. It was time to deliver the good news to Azrakal. He seemed pretty happy with the results and now has officially given me Sharon's contract, so he is now officially my companion. Before leaving, he really had something to say to his old employer. I, I don't think he liked him very much. Right. Making our way to the GNR, Three Dog instructed to follow the river and you will find Rivet City, situated at the far end of the map. So off we went and with Sharon by my side, I'm hoping to feel much safer in the DC ruins. Just a quick note as well, that while I'm able to do a lot of damage to enemies, in return, they can do a lot back. So <laughs> it does depend on what armor I'm wearing. And this also includes my all my companions as well. Upon reaching level 7, I invested all my skill points into explosives, big guns and barter because just everything is just so overpriced. Said hello to Dukov and his um, 
uh, companions and spoke to him about a certain key Mr. Crowley wanted. He said he didn't hate ghouls with such passion. I got nothing against ghouls. Ha! I even had a ghoul party girl once to see what it was like. That's so gross, man. So Mr. Crowley's story isn't really adding up. Continuing my journey to River City, where there were more super mutants, I didn't really feel like trekking further in the dark. So I stopped at a raider base that I recently cleared out, and I stayed there until sunrise. Oh, hey, it's snowing. We continued our journey to River City. Before getting there, the Jefferson Memorial seemed to be completely overrun with super mutants. And considering we have to clear this place out anyway, I thought it would be a nice test to see how effective Sharon is. And he did not disappoint. Damn, Sharon. Okay. Okay, we got this. We're going to be a team, yeah? So I'm going to go in. All right, and then your turn. Oh, beautiful. Once free of super mutant infestation and tripping up the stairs, I finally reached River City, which was right down the road from there. I did have to pass a super mutant with a minigun who nearly game ended me. Oh. Rushing to the doctor for much needed treatment, I then made a beeline for the market before it closed. I got a rocket launcher and a grenade launcher because, you know, they go boom, with a side of tasty noodles. Last thing to do was to go to the science room where I spoke to Dr. Lee. She told me to go find a holotape in the Jefferson Memorial, and which after listening to it, it told me that my father went to Vault 112, all the way in the middle of nowhere. Ah. <sighs> Checked out the view from Vault 101. Once again, I really enjoy the atmosphere of this game and then slept in some random caravan nearby. They're really fighting going on right now. There is. Guys, I was trying to sleep. Get out of here. All right, is that everyone? Oh, there he is. What do you want? We're trying to find this place up north called Oasis, but we ain't interested in sharing it with every dirty waster that wanders in. So now, look what we well, that was a weird way of saying thank you for saving your life. I stumbled into a ghost town in the middle of nowhere. It had a raider holding up a few shops. This one shop, oh, I obviously knew it was a trap, but I just could not resist. So for you guys, I want to show you this awesome domino effect. Wait, hold up. Rewinding back in time, I took out the sugar bombs and just left. Despite the rain starting to pour and enemies shooting at me from a, such a long distance, I pushed forward until reaching the Smith Casey's garage. The vault was hidden underneath the garage, which I thought was very different considering all the other vaults are in, in like caves. A Robo Brain greeted me and told me to put on a vault suit. I jumped into a pod and was transported into a simulation. The simulation, it was just so dark for some reason and it was kind of trippy as well. The overseer of the simulation told me to go make a child cry, so I did the easiest route. And after he went running, I also vandalized his lemonade stand because it's illegal to sell without a license. And this is America. After finishing the task, the overseer said to go break up a marriage. Now, as much as I really wanted to, I never want to break up a nuclear family. And that's when an old lady came to tell me that this was all a simulation and that it can be stopped. In an abandoned house, there is a bunch of objects where you can make up a tune. The tune is actually based off the background music that I've been playing all along. which now you can break the whole simulation with the Chinese invasion and allowing you to leave. Reunited with my father, we made plans to return to Vivid City. I leveled up to level eight and chose the demolition perk again and then decided to ascend to heaven. Classic Bethesda. Just after waking up, I heard a massive explosion. 
and then finding out my father has a leg injury, which was clear that he wasn't going to make it to River City anytime soon. So I decided to press on alone. I wanted to check out the large tower in the distance before heading back to River City as it was nearby. Did some looting by some broken houses and entered an intact house, which had some random trader selling stuff. And he had this like weird, unique bathtub gin. I also got drunk off one bottle of whiskey, which probably wasn't the best idea in the afternoon. <laughs> then when reaching the tower, a ghoul was complaining that he couldn't get in because he's a ghoul. So I spoke to the guy over the intercom myself and he let me in after I threw a 100 caps his way. After some trading, I got something to eat from the cafe. Then I had to go back outside to sleep because I, I couldn't find anywhere in Tenpenny Tower to sleep. It's a hotel. What sort of hotel has no actual place to sleep? I have a feeling that the uh, food animation is broken because he's been eating a lot. Yep, he's definitely been eating all night and I don't think that's particularly normal. I wondered where my father was after a whole day has passed and saw that he was actually quite close by. And you know what? It would take like weeks for him to get to River City at this point. So I decided to go there myself. Surprise, surprise, my father showed up when I did when I went to the science room and just let him speak to Dr. Lee about some science mumbo jumbo. After a long conversation, I got bored, so I decided to speak to Zimmer instead about some different science mumbo jumbo. He spoke about a missing android from the Commonwealth and promised a big reward for finding it. So I agreed to keep an eye out for anything. I checked out the markets before leaving to go to Project Purity and lo and behold, he was selling a flamer. God bless the the USA and nowhere else. We headed towards the Jefferson Memorial and got some work started. Fell down some stairs again and pressed the button. I am doing serious work right now. Booped a computer and then headed into the tunnels, giving the introduction to our big evil boys in the game, the Enclave. They were able to do some decent damage with just one shot, mainly due to having laser weapons, and it was really important that I played carefully. Luckily, they weren't as durable as I thought they were. Time for you to burn. Oh, the time for you to burn, baby. There we go. The nail board? Entering the main room, my father is speaking to an important looking man, assuming that he is the general or leader of this group. A poor girl got completely wrecked, and then... You know what I love about this scene is that you actually see Colonel Autumn like stab something in his arm. This is how he actually survives the radiation blast. And like, that flew over my head so long. Dr. Lee, you need to help me on this. All right, it's time to get the hell out of here. This is the first time I'm actually using the rocket launcher and it feels great. Let me see if I can get a sweet shot when his back is turned. We got to the Citadel in complete darkness. I let Dr. Lee just explain the situation to Lyons, who is the leader of the Brotherhood of Steel. And once that long conversation was done, I headed straight to sleep by kicking out a soldier out of their bed. Sorry, man, I'm the main character here. After speaking to Lyons, I was granted with the knowledge of using power armor and approval to trade with the Quartermaster, which gave me a great opportunity to offload some stuff. My main objective was to look for all the known vaults in the wasteland and find one with a Gek inside, or Garden of Eden creation kit. It's basically equipment to restart life, or in this case, purify water. Once the Gek has been found on the Brotherhood of Steel computer, we went to go to speak to Rothschild about it, the head scribe of the Brotherhood of Steel. He told me that a Gek is indeed in Vault 87, but unfortunately, this vault is filled with radiation and with only one way of getting through, which is through a secret tunnel. So with all that information in hand, Sharon and I headed out to Vault 87. It was already the evening when we got there as it's so far away, and it has also been snowing, which really impaired my view. Why does there have to be super mutants everywhere I go? No matter if it's in the DC area or just the middle of nowhere, there's just super mutants. Go away. <laughs> Oh, please tell me this is it. Inside was a little kid that was defending a big entrance. And with a surprisingly low speech check chance, 
I was able to come in. I basically just wanted to find a bed real quick to sleep in before actually going into Vault 87. I was awoken by the most annoying kid in the game. Move over Moira, Sticky is here to be just as annoying as you are. He was bothering me because he wanted to go to Big Town and I was supposed to escort him. So that's not gonna happen. So I told him to go there by himself. Venturing towards the back of the entrance of Little Lamplight, we were granted exits through the caves. Go on Sharon. Go on, that shotgun is doing work. Get your big ass forehead away from me. We eventually got to the entrance and there were a ton of super mutants. Downstairs of the vault, I heard a strange super mutant voice. It seemed to be a friendly super mutant called Forks. He wanted freedom. Why would I help out a super mutant when I had Sharon, who was immune to radiation? He can just go in for me. The contract entitles you to my services in combat. I'm nobody's errand boy. I'm afraid you'll have to get it yourself. Well, I guess that plan is out the window. I guess I will help out the super mutant then. At the end of the corridor, I broke a console and Forks was now free. He seems happy about being out of the room, and he proceeded to head towards the Gek room. Further in, it was filled with deadly radiation, so Forks told me to wait here as he collected the Gek, and then handed it over to me. With victory appearing over the horizon, I headed out of the bolt, and suddenly, a flash of bright light appeared. It was the general. And I guess Sharon just casually watched me getting dragged away. I don't know what's going on anymore. What's going on? Upon awakening, I found myself confronted by the general, pressing for a code. So I gave him a false code, and he wasn't exactly too happy about that. I have had enough of your games. I should have killed you right away. We have the Gek, we'll get the code. We don't need you. Luckily, Eden got involved and asked him to come and meet him. Once the general left, Eden opened up my cell and told me to get my things from my locker. Hold it right there. You're supposed to be in that holding cell. You're not going anywhere. But the president There's said that I can come through. In the next Does that not relay to the I other guards? Them, you're going back to your cell. No. Yeah, that's what I... Oh, wait, there's two of them. <laughs> I didn't think this one through. Close door, close door, close door. All right, as soon as they come through the door... Nathan! Nathan, what are you doing here? Wacky, wacky. Vault 101 is to be shot on sight. I repeat. Oh, great. A mutiny. After a whole lot of surviving later... I bumped into Anna Holt, who was one of the scientists working with Dr. Lee. She explained that she liked it here and didn't mind actually working for the Enclave. And to me, that's betrayal. So I did what anyone else would do in this situation. A civil war broke out when I reached Eden's door, and it was now time to go speak to him. He wanted me to put a virus in the water so that it would kill every mutant and non-clean human who drank the water. It was a convincing speech at first, and long term it would actually help cleanse the wasteland, but I don't think it was that wise because it would cause so much unnecessary deaths. I had to pick up the virus anyway and headed out. The civil war continued as the Enclave started to dispatch further birds, then this OP final boss guy comes out of nowhere. I had to do some Vietnam tactics to burn him from underneath, which worked really, really well. And when I went to go check on his body, he seemed to have 50 pencils on him for some reason. But hey, at least his armor looks cool. When leaving the base, Forks was there wrecking havoc. I thanked him for his help and offered if he wanted to be one of my companions, but instead he wanted to wander the wasteland instead. Or more directly, he didn't like me and just wanted to hang out at the Museum of History for the rest of the game. Returning to the Citadel as morning approached, I ran straight to Elder Lions. It seemed like they were getting ready for an attack on the Purifier. Sentinel Lions gave me some Brotherhood of Steel power armor and asked if I was ready. Now obviously I wasn't ready, considering I'd just come out of a battle, so instead I went to the History Museum and did some trading. Then went to Rivet City to do more trading, but was stopped by a woman from the railroad as my snooping around for the missing android really annoyed her. Or do you have some kind of personal grudge against an innocent android who simply- Moving on. Fine. I slept at the Museum of History just one more time before the fight. And get it to where it needs to go. Once the fields are down, we head straight for the facility. 
I returned back to the Citadel ready for the attack. And I do appreciate both the Enclave and the Brotherhood are still waiting for me to get ready first before anyone attacks each other. Rothschild turned on Liberty Prime and we headed out. Why does that keep happening? the main room where the general awaited. I attempted to reason with him, but he stubbornly refused to stand down. So we attacked each other, which wasn't very smart considering he had no armor. OP guy back in the Enclave base would have been a better boss to fight than this guy. Then came the moment of truth, activating the purifier filled with radiation. I was told to go in and finish my father's work and make him proud. Screw that. I told Sharon to go in considering he's a ghoul and he's immune. I don't recall that being part of the plan. Bro, not not again. Just just go in. Luckily he agreed, thus finishing the main quest for Fallout 3. Ron Perlman told me I was a bad boy because I enjoyed game ending people, and because I didn't enter the room, he called Sharon a true hero. Instead, allowing a true hero to venture into the irradiated control chamber of Project Purity. After turning on Project Purity, we found ourselves waking up in the Citadel. Lyons briefed me on a successful activation of the Purifier and directed me to speak with Rothschild about additional missions. Of course, as soon as I'm able to move again, they want me to do more things. But as it was the evening, I think I'll wait until the morning. So I headed to speak with Rothschild, who informed me of another battle unfolding just outside of the capital wasteland. I just got out of a coma of two weeks, and they're already like, Hey, so, um... We didn't expect you to live the previous battles, so we're gonna basically just send you on another death sentence. But anyways, okay, bye! Along the way, it was heartwarming to see that the Brotherhood of Steel's efforts in providing water to the wasteland has made its way towards the outskirts. Paladin Tristan reported to me and we walked our way to the battle. The conflict escalated quickly with the reappearance of Liberty Prime and of course what he does best, throwing bombs into things. It was going really well until we heard a siren. Strike imminent. All personnel should reach minimum safe distance immediately. Whoa, that was close. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Tragically, we lost both Liberty Prime and Sharon in an orbital strike. Sharon, my steadfast companion and a true hero, fell victim to the blast, unable to find shelter in time. Safe to say I was not too happy about losing Sharon, so I took a bunch of meds and like a roid raged lunatic, I ran into the building. Once I received the information I needed, I headed back to the Citadel with a broken leg and very bad vision. I swiftly briefed Rothschild on my situation, my vision still blurred from the recent ordeal. Seeking medical aid was my next priority, and once patched up, I rested for a few hours to remove my symptoms. Tristan unsurprisingly had yet another task waiting for me. As I'm getting quite annoyed with them, I asked if I was going to get paid, which he wasn't too happy about me saying. Not really sure why I'm helping these wannabe tin men anymore to be honest. He told me to go to Old Only, the, the place with the Death Claws. Cool, man, no problem. With a long trek ahead, I stopped at my favorite bed as I wouldn't be able to get further in the dark. I woke up early to begin my journey. Along the way, I stopped by a destroyed neighborhood filled with landmines. This place was called Minefield. I know, very creative. I diffused a bunch of mines for my collection, except for this one. 
After looting and lockpicking, I was able to level up. We're now at level 14 where I chose tag so I can get some extra skill points on medicine to ensure my survival better. As the day wore on, I continued scavenging until dusk. Bro, what just happened? Eventually staying in a random house. It was still dark and snowing when I woke up, but I wasn't too far away from old Alney now, so it was just one final push. Within moments, I found myself unexpectedly facing two Yao guys, which is a fun way to start the day. And to make things worse, I ran into a problem, a large radiation pit. And while that's fine as I'm wearing power armor, it's still not ideal. So looking around the nearby shed, I stumbled upon a bobblehead, which was kind of cool. Then venturing through the radiation dump, I neared old only. Whereupon entering, it was extremely quiet, which was kind of worrying. Where are they? I thought they were- oh, oh, sh 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 Death Claws do immense damage even when you're wearing one of the best armors in the game. So I knew I just had to run into the tunnels. And this is where it got more complicated. This tunnel is filled with Death Claws. And as they are as tough as nails, it's going to be extremely, extremely hard to get through. So I need a very clean and thorough plan. Do say it appears that I'm in a bit of a problem at the moment. A predicament, if you will. Oh, fuck. Safe to say the plan didn't end too well and it actually killed me, not just once, but five different times. Saying that this was hard is an understatement. This was ridiculously difficult. I knew I should have brought the dark gun that cripples their legs in one shot. Eventually, I had a plan that did work and it was really messy. And after using an armory's worth of explosives and a bunch of stim packs and meds, I eventually cleared out the death claws. Did a bit of exploration around the area. Oh no. And found a hole leading to the next area with some ghouls. They were basically leaving, which I don't blame them for. And I headed towards the nearest bed because after that ordeal, I needed to replenish some stats. Really early in the morning, I ate something and delved deeper into the mines. And as you would have guessed, there were more death floors. Now around this time, I am running out of supplies with only mines and grenades at my disposal. So I had to be a little bit more efficient with what I had. I reached a point where there were at least three death claws nearby and I had to place down multiple mines as protection and ran for my life. After a few more mines later, I finally took out the threat and was able to continue. Unfortunately, it got even worse. And what's worse than death claws? It's more enclave. And these guys were not messing around. Well, I was a little bit. Passing by the enclave, I eventually reached my last destination, which is a lab. Now, the mission was to grab a Tesla coil, so this would be in this lab somewhere. Now, of course, this place was well guarded with a bunch of sentry bots again, which shot me to death. You know, I'm really starting to dislike sentry bots. They're just so OP, some of them. Oh, sh Wow, that did a lot of damage. Okay. No, that was a really, really bad idea. Yeah, this is... Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yep. Oh, for God's sake. Oh. Yep, this was a trap. This was a trap. Okay. Front door. Nope. Okay, that's the switch over there. Ah, nice and easy. And I'm there. I finally reached the Tesla coil. I powered down the energy around it and took it. Now it's time to head back to the Citadel. Yeah, I think I'm done here. Delivering the Tesla coil as requested, my last mission is assigned to infiltrate the presidential metro and reach Adams Air Force Base, where the new Enclave base resides. I leveled up to level 15 and reached 100 on big guns, explosives and melee weapons and chose intense training so I could put another point in my special attribute. Day 23 of my journey, I made my way towards Rivet City for some much needed trading. While there, I encountered a guard whom I've never spoken to before. She explained that she was getting worried about the caravans as they were getting ambushed a lot, so I agreed to help investigate the problem. I tracked down the latest water caravan, only to find it already under attack by bandits. So I cleared them out and took a note from them which explained their new meeting point, which was located at Grandma Sparkle's place. 
I never really liked that woman. There's always something dodgy about her. Approaching their leader, who was some reason in the water, told me to put on some armor and wait. I waited for a while and nothing happened. Hold on a minute. Is he? Yep, that he's definitely, um, well, how did this happen? Sorry, guys, uh, you're gonna have to join with your leader. Only to be told by the guards that I won't be rewarded. The f- She said to go speak to Bigsley if I wanted a reward in the Jefferson Memorial. Now, I think it was about time to start planning for the final mission, but there was no way I was able to do this alone with the amount of soldiers there are at this base. And with my karma being evil and having no access to any evil companions at the moment, I had to change my tune and become more neutral. I headed outside and gave a bunch of acupura to a beggar outside, which seemed to have changed my karma. The next stop was to the Robco factory. Now, why you may ask? Well, there is a robot trader there who will sell you a Mr. Gutsy soldier for caps and can only be obtained through the neutral karma. I was able to buy RL3 for just 500 caps and now with a new companion, I was much more prepared. The last thing to do today was to tie up the previous quest and speak to Bigsley, who, might I say, wasn't too keen of me. I was also blaming me for all the hard work he had to do now. He gave me my reward, which was a bunch of useless junk. Cool. Great. And to be honest, I can really feel this on a personal level. Lastly, I traveled to Megaton for some last minute trading and rested in the saloon. Today was the final push to Nanellis Air Force Base and finish off the Enclave once and for all. And if you are enjoying the video, I would highly appreciate it if you left a like and subscribed if you enjoy this sort of content. I will be making more of these in the future. To get there, I had to go through the metro tunnels and of course, just like everywhere in the DC ruins, there were super mutants everywhere. <laughs> oh, that was close. All right. Had enough of you. <laughs> Why did it change camera angle there? Arriving at a Brotherhood of Steel outpost, I went into the presidential tunnels. This place was heavily guarded with sentry bots. Within the metro tunnels, there was a room with a control panel that actually spoke. Unfortunately, failing a skill check made the whole place go into security mode, which meant more robots. Carving through feral ghouls and Mr. Gutsies, I was able to grab some fuses from a now destroyed sentry bot and continue to fix one of the trains. Out of nowhere, two sentry bots attacked us once I actually fixed the train, which nearly killed RL3. And that would have been a really bad start to the mission. Once on the train, we set off to Nellis Air Force Base. Once out of the underground, the Brotherhood of Steel care package was left for me, which had a Tesla gun inside. Cool! A gun I can't use. So with my trusty flame sword and some explosives, we had to do some work. into the massive structure only to be ambushed, resulting in the loss of our trusty Mr. Gutsy companion. Well, I saw that coming a mile away. There's just so many of them. Things are now looking really bad. Not only have I lost a companion, I have no healing supplies and running out of ammo. Making my way through the base slowly, I eventually had to make a drastic decision. In order to survive, I had to take off all my armor as it created a lot of noise and put on a stealth boy. The stealth boy makes you invisible, which is great. However, the problem is, is that it eventually will burn out, which means that I will only have a limited amount of time. But with this plan, I should be able to sneak past the soldiers. I think I made a good decision. I hope. Oh no. Go, man. Go. Stop eating. 
I made my way through the last stretch of the launch pad where I set off an orbital strike on the base and headed straight out where the lion's pride came out of a vertebrate. We got on and got to a safe distance where we saw the destruction of the enclave and central lions was on the floor for some reason. So I threw her off the edge. <laughs> what? <laughs> We headed back onto the vertebrate again and headed straight back to the Citadel, where we spoke about the success of the destruction of Adams Air Force Base to Elder Lions, and then headed to sleep. After some trading with the Quartermaster, I made my way straight to Megaton. It was time that I finally stopped representing the Brotherhood of Steel and settled down somewhere. In order to do this, I had to deal with this lovely landmark in the middle of this settlement. So am I going to choose Megaton or Tenpenny Tower? I eventually chose here because ultimately it is a good location on the map as it's more central in comparison to Tenpenny Tower. I told the sheriff about the dodgy guy in the saloon and we went over to confront the man, resulting in a tense altercation that nearly costed Lucas his life. I must be getting slow in my old age. Thanks for saving my hide there. Next thing to do was to fix the leaking pipes around town. Not sure if that was what I needed to do in order to get a home, but whatever, it was a easy job to do. And then lastly was to defuse the bomb in the middle, thus making Lucas Sims happy for me to move in. Before going in, I wanted to get some furniture for my house, so I had to pop into Moira's shop in order to get a bunch of stuff. I basically spent most of my money, but now I have a good place to put all my things. I made a pilgrimage to the place where Sharon had met his end, retrieving the belongings that I had left behind and bringing them back to Megaton. I had to do another pilgrimage, but this time to Jericho's body where I left a few things left over. It was kind of sad seeing all the companions that I previously had. But mostly today is trading with River City and the History Museum to get more supplies as I was running really low. Back in the clinic shortly. I'm eating. I'm eating right now. Oh, screw this. I spoke to a doctor at River City about the android and he spoke about a scientist that fled to the other side of the boat called Pinkerton, who might know more about the missing android, which is good to know. Mmm, tastier. Mysterious meat chunks. I went back to River City to ask more questions with the locals about Pinkerton. Maybe the older residences know about him. So I asked the old man who ran the American Museum, but instead he wanted to talk about wanting me to find the Declaration of Independence in exchange for a reward. Obviously I agreed, but as I was on this mission, I didn't really have time to do it right now. So it will have to wait. Speaking with a woman from the lower decks of the ship, I received information that Pinkerton could indeed be found at the bow of the ship. You know I really regret taking that tackle perk. I also bumped into Ted who was Crowley's targets. Using my massive muscles to threaten him, I got his key and his clothes as well. I, I didn't want his clothes. Now I'm more interested in the keys now, I went towards Tenpenny Tower because Crowley wants Tenpenny dead as he really did hate ghouls. I took a key from the side which I'm pretty sure a guard should be sitting here and confronted him. He wanted me to pay him double for Mr. Crowley's death and I mean, caps are caps, right? So what I did is that I stole his key using a stealth boy and headed back to Megaton to ready myself to get the last key. On my quest for the last key, I had to venture all the way to the top right of the map, steering clear of old only, of course. And along the way, I stumbled across an old diner where I discovered a Keller holotape and a few explosives. Now, the Keller holotapes, eventually, if you collect all five, you should be able to unlock the best gun in the game. Not today, thank you. Ow. Oh. I think my computer froze. Hell yeah. I pressed on to the Republic of Dave where a patrol of Brotherhood of Steel outcasts and raiders got into an altercation. I joined them and it nearly got me killed. Upon my arrival to the gates of this small settlement, a child let me in. Damn, that's one dirty outhouse. I got to speak with the one, the only Dave who gave me permission to be on his land. What a god amongst men he is. I spoke about Crowley and he explains that they used to be part of an expedition team to Fort Constantine. I demanded a key from him in order to keep him alive. A nice and smooth transaction was made and I was out. As I made my way back, I stumbled upon an abandoned power station where I encountered a stranger called Ben Canning who requested water. Now of course I gave him some water because he sounds cool and 
that was it. I continued on until I found a bed to sleep in. Then all of a sudden, what the hell was that? It's just a guy shooting a rocket launcher at me. What the, who is this? Is this Enclave? Ben, you really need to leave this area for, he survived. Oh, it's a raider. He's got Enclave armor. I don't know where he got that from. I found a hidden bunker in the middle of nowhere and I could rest for the night. Making my way to the history museum, there I found Crowley and informed him of my success in requiring all keys. Before passing the keys over, I did ask where the fort was and he did stupidly tell me. He then paid me for all the keys and the mission was a success. For me, not him though. I took the keys as I wanted to know what treasures awaited in Fort Constantine. But more importantly, back at Tenpenny Tower, Alistair paid me nicely for his assassination. Also, if you're wondering about Dukov's key, well, I stupidly forgot to record that, so he basically died from Enclave soldiers that were nearby. Good job, man. I was determined to confirm once and for all whether Pinkerton was indeed in the bow of the ship, and after detonating the door to get inside, I encountered numerous Mylurks and traps before reaching an elderly man who I presumed was Pinkerton. Our conversation revealed that Harkness, the main security guard at Revit City, was the android all along. I probably spoke to him maybe like once, so this was irrelevant to me, kinda. Finding out as well that he did facial reconstruction, I wanted him to fix me up, and I got myself a really cancerous eye. Why? Eh. It's kind of cool, I guess. Afterwards, I returned to River City and informed Zima of everything, earning some Commonwealth technology in return, which made my vats better, and I leveled up to level 18. I chose the explosive engineer perk so I can now make missiles and mini nukes, which might be useful. Oh, hey, Victoria. <laughs> Was there something else? As the evening approached, I returned to the History Museum. There, I saw a man selling some water. He gave me a really crappy sales pitch and I drank his Aqua Cura. Basically, dirty water. It sucked so much that I gave him a bad review on Yelp. The people seemed to like it. Liked it so much that they helped me ascend to heaven. <laughs> Of course, that wasn't really what happened. I asked him about where he got his water, and he tells me that Bigsley supplies him. You know, the guy who looks like he lives and breathes crippling depression. So I took a quick trip to the purifier again and spoke to him. He complained about another problem that Megaton wasn't receiving water and that he will pay me to get it sorted out. Considering it's so close to home, I thought I would might as well just accept the quest. I also spoke about the Aquacura problem with the sales guy, and he tells me exactly where he sends all the shipments. So so I can check that out a bit later. But first, I want to sort out this Megaton problem. At Megaton's entrance, a woman was giving water to a homeless guy, where unfortunately he met his swift end. That water. You... Damn you. I accused her of murder, and when she confessed to obtaining the water by a nearby cult, you know I had to go check that out. I received some holy water, which tastes like something I would find in a radiation pit. And speaking of radiation, I had to get completely covered in radiation in order to get into this cult church. So now I've become a nightlight. Speaking to the leader, Mother Curie, ha, I get it. She had no intention of stopping her holy water. So unfortunately there was only one way to settle it. And this time it wasn't violent. I know. I got heavily irradiated so that she thought I was a god and stopped all the operations that way. Once completed, I eventually got rid of my radiation as I don't want to cosplay as a nightlight anymore. I returned to Bigsley to address the situation and he compensated me with yet more useless items. Cool, man. The next step was to see what was actually going on with that snake oil salesman. So I headed towards his building where a couple of ghoul guards were guarding. What were they guarding exactly? Wigs. Well, kinda, and a bunch of water. Once the jig was up, I confronted the man about it and blackmailed him so that he has to pay me per week for all his sales. Mission accomplished, I'd say. My next stop was to get the declaration of independence for an old man in River City. Inside the entrance, it was, let's say, a bit messy. Well, there goes all our defenses. Oi. Oh, that was close, Sydney, you good? 
Ah, I love the smell of a barbecue in the morning. A woman called Sydney tells me that she is looking for the independence as well for the old man and that we should travel together. I think I'm going the right way. There was like two ways. Oh. You know what? I'm going to bully him. <laughs> Go, Sydney, bully. Oh, let's see if I can do it again. Oh, Jason. No. Just keep whacking. Keep whacking. Keep whacking. Keep whacking. Keep whacking. There we go. If I see another Mr. Guts, I'm going to see if I can do it again. Oh, there he is. Oh, I didn't work that time. Until we reached a room with a sophisticated robot. He tells us we can't leave until we promise not to take the Declaration of Independence. And I don't negotiate with the enemies of the British. Returning back to Rivet City, I received a generous reward before parting a ways with Sydney and another mission was completed. The last thing to do before heading home, I made a detour to Vault 101. You know, that vault that I was supposed to come out from. So I opened up the vault right and was there. confronted by a guard who escorted me to the Overseer. Hey, uh, is this a bad time? The Overseer wanted me to stop the rebellion and a martyr wanted me to speak to the Overseer to stand down. So this was a, a hard decision. So I decided to blow up the vault. The overseer didn't really like my plan and I had to calmly tell him to leave me alone. Amato wasn't happy either, but now all the vault dwellers in this place gets to enjoy the loveliness of the wasteland. With the vault crisis resolved, I set out to recruit a new companion for my journey. Butch, the famous gang member of the Tunnel Snakes, can be recruited in Rivet City. And he was very happy for me to be part of his team. That's right, his team. <laughs> After some equipment exchanges, we both headed out to find the mercs for Riley's Rangers. A few days ago, when in the History Museum, I spoke to Riley, who was injured, asking me to save the rest of her team that was stuck on top of a hotel. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Once in deep DC, we got to work, and my god, there were a lot of super mutants. Oh, <laughs> I should have, I should have, uh, I knew that was a thing. Hey, he's not too bad, you know. Um, I didn't give him that gun. He just picked that up. <laughs> but hey, it works. Oh, look at us being a team together. There's so many super mutants, man. Butch, you good? Okay, he's do He'll be fine. He'll be fine. He's just casually on fire. It's fine. I also noticed how overpowered the super mutant overlords are now because they killed me so many times here. It was ridiculous. Butch was fine, however. So that's all that matters. <laughs> 892? Once on top of the roof, Riley's rangers were found still alive. After fixing the elevator, we all headed down for one final push. Luckily, no one died in the conflict and we were told to meet them back at base. Base was um, quite far. Along the way, we found some shelter in an underground hideout before pressing on. We continued our journey until we reached a main part of the city. Only problem is that I got to get past a war between the super mutants and the Talon company. I sat down, drank and ate something in a random house because it was going to be a big push forwards to the ranger station. Also, this happened. What's happening? What's happening? Okay. <laughs> I finally reached the ranger station. It looked like Riley was okay. She gave me some of her combat armor as a reward, which is actually pretty decent, and slept there for the night. I wanted to spend the day checking out all the shops in the nearby area, and I really liked the detail that they put into these stores and homes in this mod. I went into pharmacies, toy shops, townhomes, computer shops. Ow. 
and even a vault shop, which was pretty awesome. Heading back to Megaton, there was a bit of a commotion with the Brotherhood of Steel and the locals. All right, let's move up. Come on, Joe, help me get the wall. Hey! The fact you thought you could steal from the Brotherhood of Steel is absolutely wild to me. Like, what did you expect to happen? There was still a mission I needed to resolve, which was to help out Big Town. And with the main guard guy hey, dying in day right one, <laughs> I had to ask around. Someone said that two of the main citizens were captured by super mutants and that they needed help. And as the messiah of the wasteland and with Butch by my side, I knew that we could at least try and save them. So we headed out to the police station where they are kept, but not before stopping at Minefield just for a quick nap before the next day. We continued our journey towards the police station. It seems like there was a bit of a dust storm as well, which made it really hard to hear and difficult to see from a distance, which I thought was really cool. I didn't even think this was even a thing, so props to the mod makers on this one. We reached the back of the police station, which might have been a great choice, so we can ambush them from behind. As I was sneaking, I heard to super mutants talking about the big town residents being kidnapped but then they got distracted and i gave them a good old whack i found one of the survivors in a kitchen guarded by a super mutant overlord and the other was put inside a jail we left through the front entrance which let's say was not the best idea but we eventually got back to Big Town. She was thankful for being saved, but she knew another attack was going to happen soon. So I said I'll stick around to defeat the super mutants, and I did just that. I like to think that I'm getting used to grenades now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> How did that miss? There we go. Unfortunately, though, there was a casualty, but at least now they are safe. The next day, I wanted to resolve the ghoul problem for Tenpenny Tower. And as a ghoul lover, I feel like that they deserve all the right to live. And How's 500 bottle caps sound? Bro, they are so dead. I headed into the metro tunnels to find, surprise, surprise, more ghouls. It didn't take too long before I reached a small three-man settlement. I told Roy Phillips that I was here to end him, and I put him aflame. After the last guy was put into the dirt, I headed back and spoke with the chief. The deed was done, and an easy 700 caps was given. I spent most of it on equipping Butch with more ammo because he shreds with a Chinese assault rifle. Oh my god, it's Ben Canning again! What's up, man? A while back, there was a kid who was asking for help, and me being a little saint at the moment, I wanted to help out. So he told me that his town was burnt down by monsters. These monsters were just ants. I mean, fire ants, but they're still ants. Damn, the flames. That makes me wish I had a uh, ant companion. That would be really cool. I asked him for any leads, oh, where he told yeah, me to go find the town scientist. I didn't find him at first, but I did unfortunately find the father, which unfortunately was taking a nap on the floor. And after a little bit more exploring, I eventually found a metro tunnel. Well, this definitely helps getting a, a bunch of quantum. we are very useful for that mission at some point. But you're good. I know you don't enjoy fire as much as I do. And maybe not as inflammable either. Ow. Butch! I did level up, so I'm now level 20, and I chose the action boy for more action points. I eventually found Dr. Lesko, one of the most alpha scientists in the game. Well, you startled me. And he told me he was the one responsible for the mutations of the ants breathing literal fire. He told me to go into the deeper tunnels with the queen ant and replace a beacon to kill off all the ants apart from the queen itself. So I did some beep boops, headed back, and the doctor awarded me with a mutation to either see better or to have more strength. Of course, I chose the ant might, which gave me plus one strength and 25% fire resistance, which really works for my build. The following morning, I helped relocate the boy to Revit City, where I asked Vera, who was related to the kid, if she would take him. She agreed, and I told the kid to go meet her there. Well, it's time to take all our Nuka-Cola Quantums. Oh, I move so slow. With that out of the way, I didn't really have much to do now, so I just headed to Gerda Shade because it was just on the map, and 
why not explore more, right? At Gerda Shade, there was literally only two shacks, one owned by a woman obsessed with Nuka Cola. And after seeing her um amazing collection, invented by John Caleb Braverton in 2044, it quickly became the world's most popular soft drink. She tells me that she needed 30 Nuka-Cola Quantums. And of course, since day one, I have been collecting them myself, so this is going to be super easy. After agreeing, I headed outside to find a man who asked me to give him the 30 Nuka-Cola Quantums so he can impress her. Uh, I'd, I'd prefer to get the Nuka Grenade formula personally, so I will be sticking with the woman. Here you are. I've just so happened to have 30 Nuka-Cola Quantums. is finally full. Yay. With still plenty of time before the end of the day, I went on a very pointless treasure hunt. And after following a letter that I got, I found a safe with some naughty nightwear. Okay. It got even weirder because when I was trying to leave, a raider stops me to ask for it back. And yeah, as a wimp, I did give I it back. Psych. Ah. This looks awful. I exited through the wrong subway station and ended up in Falls Church, where the Brotherhood is still and Super Mutants are fighting. One of the soldiers completely forgot I was a paladin, as he acted like I was some sort of stranger, then set out a plan to save one of the initiates. As I couldn't even see a thing, I just wanted to end the day, so I found the nearest beds that I could find inside a building and just slept there until morning. I'm sure the initiate will be fine. As we went looking for the initiate, I saw a grim sight of many Brotherhood of Steel soldiers who had fallen. The only one that survived is the named Paladin, and he directed us towards the nearby building. Inside, it was an easy sweep through Super Mutants as we found the initiate cowering in the storage cupboard. We escorted him out and the Paladin thanked us. Returning to the matter of the nightwear, I proceeded to Gerda Shade, where Ronald offered me 200 caps for it, which I'll guess I'll accept, but I almost wanted to kind of keep it for myself. I wanted to venture north towards Fort Constantine in search for Crowley's treasure now. I think there's a rocket coming straight for me. Ow. I did not appreciate that. <laughs> oh my god. And our journey led us to Paradise Falls, a notorious slaver camp. I paid my way to what see what was going on, and within the space of a minute, I experienced two deaths. So you know they're not joking around here. Hey! This Where? <laughs> Picked up a bobblehead inside the main boss's place and stole his quantum behind the stairs. Couldn't actually see the big man himself, so I took a look around and at the edge of the map is a slave pen. A kid told me to hack the boss's computer in, in order to turn off the collars to save them, but bro, I'm no scientist or a hacker man, so that was just not gonna happen. Aren't you Mongo's good for anything? I'm a kid. I can do it. But I know what slavers do like, and that's money. I, a rich, privileged male in this desolate world, had plenty of caps, so I decided to give him 1,200 caps through a skill check and let them all free. Nice and simple. It was getting dark, so I needed to keep going north until I found a bed. I leveled up to level 21, where I chose the Explorer perk, which, kind of looking back now, kind of feels like cheating as I can kind of see every location now. I gave Butch my flame cannon as we were dealing with a lot of enemies moving forward. We found a small shack where the outcast were vibing at, and we just chilled there for the night. Which wasn't great because raiders were literally shooting us from a distance. In the next morning, we need to deal with the raiders on the lodged satellite dish. So I headed in by myself because somebody somehow lost my flame cannon. Butch. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Butch. Plus, I was worried about Butch dying due to them having explosives. So I just went in guns blazing. Yes, this is me going in guns blazing. I'm just doing it secretly. Okay, uh, they spotted me, yeah. <laughs> Get out of my way. Oh, you've got to be f kidding me. I don't know where raiders are finding power armor, but this is wrong. After I cleared all the threats, I went back to look for my flame cannon, which took so much time. But luckily, I did find it. You're lucky, Butch. You're very lucky. I went back to the broken shack one last time to see what I can loot, and lo and behold, I found a schematic for the shish kebab Mark II, which means that I think it does more damage now. And I thought it would be a good time as well to make his own flame sword. After having a nice meal, we headed off to Fort Constantine. Again. 
And again, we got attacked by Enclave. I swear they're just everywhere at this point. But Butch was really the MVP of that battle because I just hid behind a tree most of the time. And then we finally reached the fort. Butch went in guns blazing, not giving a care in the world. I checked a small house where there was some solid loot in there and even a bobblehead, which I didn't even know about. I explored more as we went deeper underground and I used all the special keys that Mr. Crowley wanted to get through to an armory. Inside was a fat man and of course the best armor in the game. But unfortunately, I couldn't use this armor because it was bugged. So that kind of sucked. All this time kind of felt like a bit of a waste, but at least I was able to get a few mini nukes out of it, so which I will definitely use later on. As I was so high up on the map, I had to consider timing now, as it basically took like half a day, nearly up to a full day for traveling this far. So I had to kind of make use of my time. Oasis wasn't too far away from me, so I started heading towards there. The trip was absolutely beautiful. After some parkour up some rocks, I eventually found the hidden place of Oasis. I entered the place and this may be the only place in the entire wasteland that actually has green in it. I performed a ritual in order to see the leader, where I was eventually awoken next to a tree with a face. He tells me that he wants to die. I mean, no problem. No. No, that didn't really happen. I was just, I was just trying it out, okay? He wanted me to find his heart in the cave and shut it off from there instead, only on the condition that all the loot inside the caves was mine. As I headed out, there was some bickering between two old people outside of the cave's entrance. The guy wanted me to put some sort of serum that stops him from growing, and the woman wanted me to do the exact opposite by putting a serum that made him grow faster, thus making the wasteland a lot more greener in the future. And and of course, her one sounded just much more mature and better. So I changed my plans from killing him and instead putting this serum in. In the caves, it had just a bunch of Mylurks, but did have some really tasty loot inside. Ooh, you know what? He wasn't wrong. There is some really good loot down here. Just gotta go find it. Eventually, we reached the heart and placed the sap to accelerate his growth. I left through a weird underwater cave exit and was thanked by the old woman. Before leaving Oasis, I was promised two gifts from people, a cool looking hood from this woman and one of my favorite armor to wear in the game, Linden's power armor. Wait, what's this? That's not his armor. He gave me his really cool power armor and then I headed out. With no clear objective right now, I responded to a distress call from the outcasts who were being attacked by super mutants. So I thought I'd help them. Once there, they showed great interest in my pit boy, which I wouldn't be surprised as they are basically obsessed with technology. Once we got past the big boy super mutants who mowed down some of them with complete ease, I spoke to their leader. Butch didn't come with me this time as I didn't really need him right now. The outcasts tell me that I need to complete a simulation in order to open up a room that they are struggling to get open. All the treasures he said will belong to me once it's open. Sounds like a plan, so I suited up and stepped into the simulation. Inside, it seems like I play as an American soldier fighting in Anchorage. Now, this whole DLC is basically just shooting stuff, but still trying to follow the rules, it means that I can't kill anything without a flamer or an explosive. So let's get to work. got to the artillery where I placed three bombs on them and set them alight. Mission completed, nice and happy. But it wasn't over completely as now I have to do three more missions before the big push onto their main base. Luckily, it got much easier as I was able to use a rocket launcher and a grenade for most of it. Tell you what, it is a breath of fresh air fighting something other than super mutants right now. Oh. 
I've really got to stop doing that. After taking out a bunch of Chinese stealth ninjas, we were able to take back the post and we were all ready for the final push. Soldiers got ready to go through the trenches. I was able to find a flamer early on and some grenades as we pushed through. Hey man, you don't want to go in there. Ah, uh, rest in peace, Tin Man. And after disabling the rest of the mines, they all pushed in with Fat Mans and we entered the final part of the DLC. I somehow convinced the general that it was all over and he committed Sudoku. The general came out to say that the simulation was complete and I exited out of the pod. I opened the door in the outcast base and lo and behold, that beautiful T-51B power armor that I can actually wear. I immediately put it on and checked out what other goodies there were. And unfortunately, I couldn't use any of these apart from maybe the flame of fuel and the grenades, but I was still happy to have this loot regardless. Upon exiting, I heard two outcast members having a go at each other. They formed a mutiny because I took some of their gear. Hey man, you do not want to go out there. I told you, I told you, man. Thinking of what else to do right now, I did a bit more trading. One of the trade caravans was sitting outside and he spoke about Canterbury Commons. So I wanted to see what sort of operation was going on up there. So I recruited Butch again and we set up our travels for Canterbury Commons. It was already nighttime when we got there and it seemed like there were two complete clowns fighting each other. A robot tin man and a mentally ill bug woman. Once the battle was done, the residents came out to actually introduce me to the town. I asked what the hell that was about, and he asked me if I could resolve this conflict. Caps were obviously put on the table, and I really do like caps, so I agreed. I stepped outside and woke up drinking blood again. I really gotta stop doing that. Then planned out exactly who I was going to speak to first, the ant woman or the tin man, asking a local child for directions to their respective layers, the Robco factory and the ants hideout. I opted to approach the ant woman first because she is the big bad guy here. Navigating through her traps, which proved really ineffective. Oh, hello there. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, there's another one. Did that one just pop out of nowhere? I have confronted her in her lair. Despite attempts to reason with her, she resorted to violence. So she got one quick slice to the body and that was the end of that. She had no loot worth taking apart from this quantum and I headed back to town. Roy rewarded me with a bunch of caps, which I just used to upgrade one of the caravans. In fact, I upgraded all the caravans so that they all had good quality items next time I meet them. It costed a lot of caps, but it was totally worth doing. The town was incredibly dull. So before leaving, I wanted to explore some local landmarks. Notably, this ruin down the road. When reaching the gate, I stopped by a woman who asked for my business. She came down to the stairs, but decided to mess around instead of opening the door. Took her a while, but she eventually got the door and I spoke to their leader and was extremely open about everyone here being a slave. Kind of weird just trusting a stranger like that. So I said I wouldn't tell anyone and left. What a weird place. The last landmark I wanted to check out was the Mechanist Space, which was totally not worth doing considering how many sentry bots there were. And a few explosives later, we reached his base with his iconic entrance door. Yeah, he wasn't there. Where did he go? With the slave quest the only quest available, I embarked on a journey to secure the Lincoln Memorial map. The reason they wanted this was to fix the Lincoln Memorial once the slaves got there. And all these artifacts would be found in the Museum of History. Butch and I went to town slicing up a bunch of ghouls and we did some scavenging. I found a Lincoln's diary, top hat, coins, 
and even his repeater, which looked really nice, by the way. Once I had everything, I left the Museum of History and ran straight back to the escaped slaves. I spoke to the leader who was interested in all the extra items I found, and he even wore the hat. What such a gentleman. Before they set up to move into the memorial, I had to go check to see if it was safe. And the irony is, it wasn't. It, it wasn't safe. In fact, there were slavers there. It's almost like they knew that slaves were going to go there in the first place. They escorted me to their leader and asked me about the runaways. I said I knew where they were as I was a complete sucker for caps, but little do they know is that I planned to double cross them. Traveling back to the Union, it seems like they were all getting prepared for the attack. I planned on sticking around to help them as well, so I waited. And waited. And waited. The following day, the attackers finally appeared over the horizon. Only after 40 hours, though. Damn, you guys took ages. We are just about to wipe out this temple of the Union. Yeah, good luck with this. I'm going to place a bunch of mines around. <laughs> Hopefully they trip on them. And once the leader was killed, oh! it was finally safe for the runaways to move in. I have no idea what's happening here. After going back to the Lincoln's Memorial, we both ate and waited. They were still not here for some reason, so I got bored and just had a look around the local area. Went into a metro tunnel where me and Butch took down some ghouls. In fact, Butch saved me here because I was set on fire. Tunnel states for lights. We eventually came out to the DC ruins and I was absolutely <laughs> myself because staying here is a death sentence. We really need to leave. There is no reason to be here. And Butch only has a pistol, so... I think it's time to leave. Wow, I haven't done that in a hot minute. So after backtracking, we stumbled on a toy factory. For some reason inside, the enemies' heads were popping off a lot. Through one of the wings of the factory, there were also super mutants. I'm not really sure what's going on here, but there is definitely something really weird going on. And the last enemy was a human scientist, and it seems like he was controlling all these enemies, which explains the noise. I have a few questions. Why in a toy factory? How did they get the super mutants? And finally, how did he do all this? All these questions made my brain hurt, so I slept in his room. Day 55 was just one big old hallucination, to be honest. I visited Vault 106, which was where a bunch of Vault crazies attacked me. And saw visions of dad. Oh, hey, Liam Neeson. Oh, hey, more Liam Neesons. <laughs> This was a crazy place, but it was worth it as I was able to get that science bobblehead. Oh, this is new. Paul from the famous Tunnel Snakes? Butch, why didn't you tell me about this? After trading at the History Museum, I made my way to the memorial where I finally met up with the others and they rewarded me with schematics for a dart gun. I spent the day exploring some other locations because there is still more to see, especially near the middle of the map. Whoops, sorry, Butch. We found another Keller holotape in the broken down church, which goes to my collection. Finishing off the day by going into this broken shack. Inside, an elderly woman spoke about her passion for playing the violin and her desire to get a violin from a vault. Intrigued, I agreed on helping her to locate this violin. The vault in question for this violin is located in Vault 92, which of course is next to the most friendliest place of all, old only. Knowing the dangers, I told Butch to stay back on this one because I planned to be stealthy this time, which may have been the best call I've made in this run because there were raiders, Yaogwais, and death claws everywhere. <clears throat> Inside the vault, it seemed like it was broken into and contained plenty of Myalurks. I am so confused. Weirdly enough, it didn't take too long to find the violin, and I really hated this vault's layout, so I left very quickly. 
I traveled back to Agatha where she seemed really thrilled that I found a violin for her so she can start making music again. So now she'll be able to play music on her own radio station, which I'm available to listen to. Continuing my search to find every location before the 100 days is up, Butch and I headed to the Fairfax ruins, which I didn't know was completely run by raiders. So we did a bit of urban combat. Ah, some urban fighting. Bonk. I'm quite enjoying this weapon. I'm still kind of getting the hang of it, but it's, it's pretty fun to use. If I can hit. Thank you, Butch. Now, the majority of the side of this map is now explored, except for the Robco factory, which I am going to shock you had robots inside. Actually, it had a bunch of rad roaches and mole rats instead, which was kind of strange. The only thing worth noting was a big computer that I had no access to. The bobblehead collection is coming along nicely. I ventured more into some random landmarks to mark them off the map, which for some reason had quite a few enclave patrols in. Why? I'm starting to think they don't even have a plan here. <laughs> Just a few minutes later down the road, two raiders came charging at us. And for fun, I thought, let's make a good old fashioned medieval battle as we charged at each other. And there's a death claw coming our way. How did I do that? Did I just go past him? Come here. Come here. Both of you. Stop it. Sucker didn't know who he was messing with. To finish this day up, we stopped by some ruins where a bunch of super mutants have set up base here. And they were really powerful, so I plan on leaving this area at once I have slept. Today I wanted to finish off the locations in the furthest area of the map, northeast. It would be nice never having to come back here unless I have to, you know, like the Deathclaw Sanctuary. But little did I realize this was all going to go wrong. We were heading towards the relay dish where we started to get shot at by the Enclave. To push in, I have to. <laughs> Hopefully I can get the jump on them. Ow. Ow. I need to get in. I need to get in. Go, go, go. Quick, 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 quick. Quick. It was time to power up with a bunch of meds and get my revenge. I made sure the coast was clear and set myself a mission to find Butch. After ages of looking, hours went past. And then I found this. Yep, that, that's him. I took what I could and headed back to Megaton and placed his Wilder's mask on my shelf. I went to Revit City to go back to the place where I found him in the muddy rudder and drank to his memory. Then I drank again and again. Drank so hard I couldn't see properly and I actually passed out for a few hours. Upon regaining consciousness, I bumped into Ted who was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. Drank some more wine at a hotel and then headed up to the bridge deck where I could get some fresh air. Things were getting really hard to see and my heart was racing, so I headed back to my hotel room as soon as I could, and just before I got into bed, I passed out. When I regained consciousness, I headed to the dock where he helped fix me up and heal me. I headed back to Megaton to stow away some unnecessary items, and then ventured back into the wasteland with only the essential gear and my trusty flame sword. I had a plan to check out the weird radio station in the middle of nowhere. This led me to discover an alien crashed ship. Without warning, I found myself whisked away into space. Where I became an unwilling participant in non-consensual stuff. In the nicest terms possible. 
I passed out and woke up in a cell with another woman called Soma. Some poor man was picked up and taken away into the shadow realm and we knew we had to escape. Soma thought of a plan to create a fight in order for the guards to eventually break up the fight so we can go and take them out. Problem is, is that I still can't attack other things, so I have to let Soma take on these aliens. It did take a bit of time, but she did actually take down the guards. Blew up an energy core and a girl came running out and into a chute where she was able to open the door. She told us that we needed to go to the engine room, and so we all headed on forwards to see what we can do to get off this ship. Now let me tell you, taking down the aliens is never always so simple. Right, I'm going to try and be sneaky about this. Probably saw. What's wrong with their eyes? <laughs> oh my god! Some of the aliens are easy to take down, but others will have this sort of shimmering effect, which is sort of like a, a shield, like an energy shield. So they take a lot longer to actually kill. And plus their weapons are really dangerous. So I had to be really strategic about things. We finally reached one of the main rooms where it was housing cryogenic chambers containing individuals frozen in time. There was an anchorage soldier, a cowboy, a dead spaceman and even a Japanese samurai warrior. Now we have to go through three different rooms in order to sabotage important energy cores in order to advance. The first one I did was in a robotic room and I brought Soma with me. We kicked some robot ass if they have one. Oh, that was a big explosion. Bonk, 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 bonk. Oh my God, there's so many of them. Bad choices were made and blew up a core. This was quite a straightforward mission. And after reaching my way back to the main core of the ship, I think it was time to relax. The other room we went in is the cryogenic room where I took the anchorage soldier. Not sure why, but he did lose his gun really early on through our mission. So I'm not sure how that happened. But unfortunately, I did have to take down the rest of his squad as they went crazy on me, which he wasn't too happy about. What the hell did you do that for? There might have been a chance to save them. But more importantly, I blew up another core. Now I wanted Mr. Cowboy Man to follow me into the sorting room, which is another optional room to explore. And there was some really good loot in here. It's almost like they had a catalog of everything that you can find in the wasteland, including some explosives, missiles, and flamer ammo, which really helped me gear up a little bit more. Now I know that a lot of people mock this DLC, but I think that they really did put a lot of thought into the personality of these aliens, just a little bit and I can appreciate that in some way or another. As we pressed on, there was an eerie presence with the giddy up buttercups scattered around this facility and it added like a really unsettling atmosphere. Oh, I love stepping into the red room of death with a evil horse. Once out of the storage room, we made our way into the hangar where a giant ship from the ground was pulled up. During our battle, Paulson unfortunately was taken down in the fight, but I persevered and reached a pivotal control panel. I now had to fight waves of aliens trying to reach to me, which was quite easy as I was able to push around with the magnetic force coils. And after some time, the main door finally opened and I blew up the last core. Returning back to the main control room, I prepared for my journey into space. Using the spaceman's outfit, as I don't think he'll be needing it anymore, I ventured forth onto the spaceship's outer shell. Move out of the way, Starfield. As much as this was cool, it really wasn't anything special. I just turned a few cylinder thingies and I was all done. Oh, and my head exploded for the funsies due to no oxygen. With all the rooms completed, we moved on forwards. We were greeted by what was probably the alien captain, where he seemed quite unhappy with our progress. Yeah, now things are getting more serious. The ladies told me to move on and clear the area by myself. Thanks guys. So I did my usual, which is burning things and blowing up another core reactor. And also fun fact that the alien bio gel that I've been picking up throughout the ship actually heals you with a status effect. So I just have a bunch of crap on the screen here. I reached the death ray room. <laughs> the death ray room where I had to blow up mini reactors and of course I couldn't help myself but to shoot the big old laser by myself just for a bit um
Um, it was already there when I got here. Once the reactors were down, I was able to advance once more where these abominations were hanging around. These guys were super creepy. They're basically human DNA mixed with the alien DNA, which doesn't feel like a good mix. We finally reached the captain's deck and after one grenade, It was all over. Well, that's what I thought, because looks like we're having a space battle. Just in case you forgot, we're playing a Fallout game right now. After a few shots at each other, we eventually did it. And look how majestic it looks. After the fight, the kid said that I can go back now as the ship shot a teleporter back to the capital wasteland. What a fever dream this all was. Today was another day of exploring, and now that I've done a large part of the map, I wanted to explore more of the west side of the map. So I headed towards the scrapyard, and this place kind of sucked. The only thing I could find was a dog fighting a Yaogwai, but the dog was important as he is the iconic dog meat. I also had a Wastelanders note which explained that there is hidden treasure in this place. So I spent 20 real minutes looking for this, and it was basically just a bit of ammo, so that was... That was fun. I also really wanted to take dog meat with me, but unfortunately the problem is that he's kind of invincible. So I had to kind of tell him to go back to Vault 101 as I would no longer be using him. Sorry, buddy. There was a mission that I've been avoiding since day four, and that is the Wasteland Survival Guide, given by this woman. What's up? Begrudgingly, I asked her if she needed any help with it. She asked me to check out the Super Duper Mart, which was pretty easy as I've already been there, find a live mine, which um, I may have one or two of, and then lastly, getting injured, which I will not do for her, but with my medicine skill so high, I was able to just tell her. After those three were done, she asked me to place a bug tracker in a place where my looks are breeding. And this one did require a little bit of effort as I was optionally not allowed to actually kill any of these Mylurks. So I basically just ran in, shoved it in some egg hatchling area and then ran straight out. Her next mission was to test out a mole rat repellent, which looked kind of like a stick with green goo on top. I tested it out in a location full of roll ma roll mats, <laughs> roll mats, roll mats. I tested it out in a location full of mole rats and well, it's safe to say that it repels them. It definitely repels them. But interestingly, it didn't happen with humans. I came back again just before the evening ended, where I explained that the repellent might need a bit of a redo. Her last part of the book was about human rebuilding civilization, and she made me go to the library in the DC ruins to see if I can find any records of books there. When I nearly got there, a bunch of enclave soldiers landed, and they were absolutely lasering me. Sorry. I had to hide as they had better ranged weapons than me, and with barely no cover, I had to go in stealthy. So I used the stealth boy to get into the library, which surprisingly had the Brotherhood of Steel there. I mean, it kind of made sense considering their base was right next to this place. A scribe did give me a card catalogue which had all the books that they currently had, but if I wanted gold stars on my homework, I needed to go in deeper. It's nice to have the Brotherhood actually doing something. And instead of me fighting everything. And here comes the rugby tackle. The battle was kind of crazy as the Brotherhood still actually lost. Meaning that I had to finish the job myself. Okay, I am seriously impressed they were able to kill a guy in power armor. That is impressive. Eventually got to one of the main terminals to grab even more data and then left. Just before the evening, and yes, it did take all day, I told Mora of my findings and she seemed very happy that I did the extra effort for it. And she said that we only had one mission left to ask how Rivet City was made. And I knew exactly who to speak to. So I headed straight to Rivet City to speak to Pinkerton. He seemed like the oldest resident and will know more about the subject. But when I asked him about the city's history, he refused to tell me anything because this man is so salty about being kicked out. You know, I, I, 
I can't tell you how close I was from game ending this dude. With no answers, I went to Rivet City to talk to people. The old depressed man just told me to leave him alone while his face was full of noodles. So he wasn't any help. Preston knew nothing as he joined in late. Angela would rather speak about her crush with Diego, which I bought some ant pheromones so she will attract him. I kind of sidetracks there. Then the med seller told me to speak to Bannon, the leader of the town council. Not sure why, but I started going up the ship to the top where Noodle Man was sitting but on the balcony. This man wanted to end it all. I said I could help him with that and he went flailing down. Anyways, back to finding Bannon, I finally spoke to him. He said that he organized it, but it was obviously all a lie as he was getting all the dates wrong. He referred me to the bartender in the bottom of the ship for confirmation. Ah, oh, the painful memories. She said that he was lying and that Pinkerton was the one who originally set everything up. So guess what I had to do? Yes, go back to Pinkerton again. He finally did tell me everything and he even documented his journey as well as proof. So with all the knowledge now, I can finally finish Moira's stupid book. I spoke to Moira and told her everything. She had another mission for me. She wanted me to go to the Robco factory to see if I could control some robots. This is probably the big main computer that I had no access to. So at the top of the Robco factory, I messed around with a few buttons where the robots actually came on nicely. But that didn't last long as they were starting to attack me. I feel like Moira was trying to get rid of me permanently with all these suicide missions. But with my new findings, we can finally complete the book. Hallelujah. I headed to some random radiation pit for the last part of the day, tried saving this precious Brahmin from nature, and then finally found a waste dump site. A random wastelander approached me. This guy was a little bit weird and kind of treated the Wasteland Survival Guide a little bit too seriously. And I think that was one way of ending the day. I just did a bunch more exploring. I found a bunch more sugar bombs in a broken down caravan. a torture's mask inside of a base which had the perfect stats for me. Shame that I kind of put all my stats to 100. Had some fun with my stealth boy and battles between raiders and super mutants. I'm creeping up. I should be using stealth boys more often. Whatever this epic scene was right here. And hearing my impending doom coming. Is that what I think it is? Where did the f did you come from? As much as I do like exploring, I thought it was about time to do another DLC and explore outside of DC. So I headed out to a boat outside of the DC ruins. The journey was interrupted by an unexpected radiation storm and I can see myself turn into a human glow stick again. I needed to find shelter soon or I will turn into mush. But as I was close to the boat, maybe I can get some shelter there. I spoke to a ferryman and bought a ticket to Point Lookout. I went inside the boat and rested until I ran into a bit of a problem. So it looks like that idea was out of the window. My suspicion is that the radiation killed me because the game doesn't register that all the interiors as safe from radiation storms. So I reloaded this time and went to find safety ASAP. I know the library is around this corner, so I'm going to quickly try and go over there. Oh, yep, yeah, never mind. <laughs> I'll throw this here. That will stop them coming through. Shit, I didn't know there was enemies here. You just heard a noise. I need to go. There's too many of them, I think. Oh... We're all good. We're all good. They're fighting someone else. Just gotta play it sneaky, even though I can't see anything. Hopefully there's an exit. Yeah, I kind of got spotted. Yeah, this is not good. This is not good at all. I'm gonna try and exit out again. Hopefully everyone's gone. I dealt with the last of the Talon Company and ran into a library for safety. Sat down to contemplate life and then leveled up to level 29. One more way from max level. I chose the Power Armor Training Advanced, which to be honest, I still don't know what that does to this day. And before leaving DC, spoke to Catherine, who wanted me to give a letter to her daughter, which I agreed if I found her.
we finally made it to Point Lookout and with good weather too. The first thing I did was to buy a flamer as I left mine at home from the local trader, which I never saw again. Then explored the local motel as I felt like I'll be staying here for a while. This place was pretty big as I was using an interior mod that overhauls Point Lookout and it was totally worth it. I actually had to turn on the electricity first which was down in the motel's basement. Once I fixed all the lighting and the generator, it was all up and operational. This door required 100 lockpick skill, which I didn't have, but I did have a solution that worked perfectly. Oh! A random corpse called Jackson was there, and more importantly, a bed that I can sleep in, where I actually slept because my character was really tired from the trip. I woke up after midnight to have a look around, and I'm just really soaking up the atmosphere. I knew I had a lot to explore in this motel, so I went to look through every single room possible. And some of these rooms had some really cool environment stories, and others just had a bunch of useless stuff. I feel like the crazy Nuka-Cola girl was here because of all the Nuka-Colas. This just looks like a party. Well, at least there's something in here. Damn, this guy was like setting up a whole army. As exploring the motel took a whole day, it was time to actually look outside. There was a nearby cup of Joe's where a local trader with a very large weird dog resides. Now this town only had a few new locations from this mod, so it was important to check out what I could find. Found this building, which is right next to the trader that I never saw again, and it had a lot of strange traps in there. I don't know who put all these prams here, but they're very annoying. <laughs> But there's another trap somewhere. Yep, there it is. Ugh. After stepping back out, it seems like now there is a dust storm. This game really doesn't give you a break, really. <laughs> I discovered I can actually explore the sewers too, which had some more smugglers in there. Oh, goody, more people I could burn. Which makes sense as it was all probably linked to other places. On the beaches, yes, I'm aware that I'm exploring loads of random places. There was a couple of tents and ghouls who wanted a hug. But as someone who hates being touched, I had to give them a gift instead. Inside one of the tents was a woman called Marcella. She seemed really nice and preached to me about her scripture, and that was about it. Down the road, I saw some smoke and assumed that was human life, and I was right. A trader called Carl was stationed, and he looked pretty well equipped. No, not Buster. Then suddenly it started raining, so I headed into Black Hall Manor. I had to sit down for a second before exploring this manor. When I regained composure, I walked in and saw an old man sitting down. He spoke to me about something really important to him, which was a missing artifact that was part of his heritage and he wanted me to take it back from the people who stole it from him. He was willing to offer a thousand caps for this. Um, yes please. And without hesitation, I agreed and slept in the upper bed of the house. When leaving the manor, I was confronted by the priest from the tents. She says that the book was evil and needed to be destroyed. She offered no reward, but it would be good for humanity to get rid of it. Whatever that means. Me being a skeptic, I assumed that this was just voodoo magic and wasn't real, so I still planned to give the book to the old man. I did a bit more exploration where the motel was, and I did miss a few places and gained more loot. Is that what I think it is? Yep, that's the trader's protectron. I think it was also finally time to go to the mansion to see what all that smoke was about. Now it seems to me... Yep, it seems to me that there's a bit of a home invasion going on. Go through these doors and up the stairs. Find where they are coming in and stop them. Are you prepared to do the Bernie dance? <laughs> That's not how you do it. <laughs> okay, that's all sorted. Oh, <laughs> sorry, man. <laughs> Thought you were one of them. Hurry, get in there before more of them come out. Find where they're coming from and stop them. Oh, down we go. Sorry, no visitors today. Ow. 
As a way of saying thanks, he taught me how to resist more damage when standing, which is pretty good. He ordered me to go up to the cathedral to find out why on earth they wanted to attack an old ghoul. It didn't take very long to reach the cathedral, but I was disrupted by some radiated corpses who wanted to throw their homemade meatballs at me. Once cleared, I spoke to someone over the intercom who said that I needed the Mother Punga's seed. So I was like, sure, let's do it. So I had to head all the way to the corner of the map to find this seed. Had to end a couple locals as they were getting quite rowdy. Then headed into the cave. I actually leveled up to 30 and chose the nuclear anomaly perk, which was kind of useless now looking back at it, but I thought it was funny as it kind of worked out with my build. I finally reached the mother of all punga fruits, picked off all the fruit around it and then tried picking the seed. <laughs> then things got weird. Now that bobblehead will make a fine addition to my collection. Of, of course, a transparent saw. And a couple of explosions. Very normal. Oh, you're doing well. Am I upside well down indeed. now? Most initiates never Man, I am tripping. Far, you know. Did the game just attack me personally? Oh, one can dream. Oh, don't don't try and get up yet. You'll Okay. They let me in immediately, and the tribal okay, said that I am now one of them, control. as I had a scar. What scar? Yeah, that's a big old one too. I wandered in where I spoke to a woman called Nadine, where she helped me fix up my scar. I spoke about the attack on the old ghoul, and she quickly explained that that was their leader's idea. She pointed out where I can find him, which was in a cave just outside of the cathedral. I gave the note from her mother, which she agreed to come back home. After a quick drink, I headed out to find Jackson, the leader. I had to do a bit of parkour down the large cliff and into a broken ship, where I eventually found Jackson speaking to a hologram of a brain. He didn't say too much as it wasn't really important on what he said, but instead what the hologram said. It wants me to go kill that Brit in the mansion. So now I'm just following orders from some random floating brain hologram. I think not. So off I... Yes, can I help you? I headed back to the mansion to let the ghoul know why... Where are you sliding off to? He tells me to put a frequency so that the tribe will no longer have access to Calvert, the brain hologram. But before I do, I need my precious sleep. Doing the old Brit's request, I put the frequency on a ferris wheel. Seems like I'm now on the enemy's list because the tribals came to ambush me. Ow, that's rude. Okay. Oh, rest in peace, ghoul face. Rest in peace. Nah, he wasn't dead. He just jumped into a bunker just in time. He did show a bit of anger, though. That bastard. That bastard. He killed my pups. Nearly killed me. And wanted to finally finish it once and for all. He said that he knew exactly where Calvert was in a bunker underneath a lighthouse. So off we went, and deep underground, there were plenty of robots that kept guard of old Calvert. Oh, having a nap there, Calvert. Oh no. And there was also some solid loot down here, as there was loads of energy weapons, ammo, explosives, medical supplies, which really did help me later on. Sir Ghoulface didn't really survive too long, but as he's a main character, he was invincible, so I wasn't too worried about him. The game tried to die on me, and I eventually flamed Calvert until he exploded. Desmond was happy that we finally resolved a very long feud between them and then headed back to the boat. Surprisingly, Nadine was there and she mentioned that the ferryman was the one who opened up my head. She kept him kidnapped under the boat and left me to deal with him. The dude insulted me because he got outplayed and I don't tolerate bullying, so I had to end his miserable life. After successfully completing the main quest, I decided to embark on the side quests involving a Chinese spy. I stumbled upon a holotape detailing my mission and proceeded to follow its instructions, which led me to a detention center. Yeah, I think I got him. 
Along the way, I stopped by a random shack house, which had a strange cellar leading into a crypt. I got to the end where there was a book. This must have been what the old man was talking about. A few locals tried to stop me after leaving, which of course really worked out well for them. Tried stopping by at a tribal outpost and completely forgot that all the tribals hate me. After leaving, I stopped by Marguerite's house where she was making moonshine. She wanted me to get some ingredients for her. And of course, I will get you some fission batteries for you. Luckily, I already had all these ingredients, so that was an easy mission out of the way. Back to the Chinese spy mission, I eventually reached the side of the detention center. Yeah, there was no way I was able to get through all these sentry bots without this stealth boy. In the main building, I found Agent 1 in a remains locker and then took the codes from his body. Instead of leaving out of the entrance, I came across a tunnel which led back outside of the area, which was really helpful. Also, by the way, who thought it was a good idea to make this trash pile a landmark? There wasn't anything special here that I could find, so I don't see any reason why they did this. My new mission now was to blow up a submarine nearby the lighthouse. Luckily, I've already been around there, so it wouldn't take me too long. I added a giant bulb that I found in a truck to replace the broken bulb in the lighthouse. So now everything is completely fixed. I just had enough time to go check out the submarine where I swam underwater into the sub. I ordered a self-destruct and got to safety. The final part of the spy mission was to take these special glasses that I got from a briefcase in a motel and headed to a secret bunker. Once you push the vases in a correct order, it unlocks a secret. A Protectron escorted me to the other side of the bunker and a room with a terminal was waiting for me. On the terminal, it thanked me for my hard work and gave me a nice gift of death. Luckily, I had a repair skill of 30 or I'd be suffocating right now. Waxed the robot for putting me in a life or death situation and then headed out. With only a few side missions left on this map, I wanted to turn on the power further around the motel area. I just needed three circuits which can be found across Point Lookout. One was near a, the disaster relief where I was ambushed by smugglers. The other was in Haley's hardware store and the last was in near the cathedral in a small home. I returned back to the power where I successfully fixed it all. Yay! I don't think it did anything, but hey, it's a side mission that was completed. Oh, and I stole all the Punga fruit from the cathedral because they're mean to me now. There was only a few locations left on the map that I haven't explored, and one of them being a broken ship. Inside, they had a special safe, which only opened via a terminal. I had to hand in some virus samples in order to open a safe, which triggered another side quest. Yay, fetch quests. Had to go into the deep swamp to pick up swabs of radiation stuff, set myself on fire, and then picked up a holotape. I did the exact same thing again in another location. And lastly, I didn't do it again, as I now have learnt that gas plus fire is equals no Gucci. After finding the last holotape, I went back to the ship where I put in the codes and received my amazing loot. Oh yeah, nothing I can actually use. Heck yeah. Now to do something more fun. In the corner of the map has a fun little mission Welcome where a ghoul sets up waves of feral ghouls against Shall participants that are willing to survive the until the time is up. Sports. This cost 1,000 caps, the and I mean, why not, right? Out. At the ring of the bell, we got started. A bunch of ghouls came out from all sides and we got to work. It kind of felt like I was playing COD Zombies for a second. <laughs> Unfortunately, all my teammates died. I succeeded, of course. And what did I get for all this? Absolutely nothing. But it was just a bit of fun, I guess. In the evening, I want to go visit the priest as I have the book now and wanted to see what she thought about it. So I entered her tent and saw that she wasn't there. I ate my food while hearing her last words. I only pray that... You haven't taken that book to Obadiah. You must take up my mission. It's clear to me that the old man is evil. So I headed back to the manor to confront him about this and he said that he had nothing to do with it. Sure, man. Sure. I contemplated about it, but I mean, 1k cap sounds just too nice to me. So I eventually gave him the book and then slept in his bed. As I have done everything now, I think it was time to head back. 
But before I did, I wanted to have a look around his manor because I wanted to see if he was doing anything really dodgy. Yo, I know you're not so innocent. There's something weird with you. You shouldn't be here. But I've been helping you this entire time. Don't be so rude. You know what? I'm going to find out what it is. I'm, I'm going to come back. I knew he was hiding something somewhere. I went into his living room to find a basement. Inside was a sacrifice. Yep, this is definitely pretty evil. So I went to go back to confront him about it and it appears that the locals did my job for me. I took the book off him and headed back to the capital wasteland. Catherine was happy to see her daughter back and she rewarded me with some caps for it. Then in the distance, Sydney, the woman that I did the independence mission with is here for some reason. I'm just confused. The most important thing to do now was to go to the Dunwich building where I must destroy the book. This place was completely destroyed and filled with ghouls. I went through the building for any signs of evil and nothing yet so far. Until... So there's definitely something very wrong here and I'm here to burn the demons with holy fire. One part of the building looked completely destroyed which led down into a basement and in the chambers it looked like there were some people praying with a ghoul doing some Confessor Cromwell moves. So you know I had to stop that party. I placed the book on the obelisk and... Once that was done, I think it was time to find the last location in that area where a Deathclaw wanted to hug me. Why is a mole rat trying to help him? Inside the caravan was a gnome and a schematic to a Deathclaw gauntlet, which is yet again another weapon I wish I could use. When trying to leave, I heard a noise. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, there's loads of them. Um I can't take all these guys. They've got really good weapons. You are. They can't see me. That's good. Maybe I can do some, uh, yeah, sneaky shots. One at a time. I left my home to hear another radio distress signal of a person who needed help up north. So I traveled that way with minimal loot to keep myself light and went to explore the signal while listening to Agatha's violin radio. Bumped into a very demonic trader and I've never actually seen this glitch in person before. And as I got closer to the destination, I heard gunshots. You could have at least helped me with those guys. They finally tracked me down. I thought I'd have more time. It's a man named Werner said that he and his people needed my help to be free and obtain a cure held by their leaders. On my way to the transport location, I was attacked by a man named Laszlo holding a railway rifle. Now, this is a random counter I've never seen before. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to fucking wreck the dude. <laughs> yeah, there's a railway rifle. Cool. I'll be taking that. Well, that was easy. After clearing out the raiders at the outpost, I opened the pen and asked the slave for his outfit, which he then put more clothes on. I got into costume so that the raiders now think that I'm a slave. I placed my items in a nearby locker and we headed towards the pit. It took some time to travel there, but once we got there, we got stopped by raiders. This man's not going to know what hit him. Ooh, so close. Werner stopped and said he couldn't travel any further. So alone, I headed towards the pit. You know, if I make it out alive, I will be very impressed. But luckily, when you're wearing... Ow. When you're wearing uh, very light clothes, you can run really, really fast. So this kind of works out for me. And here I am. I reached the gates where Mex was waiting for me and took all my extra things away from me. Whatever. Mine now. Thanks, Gab. I hit the jackpot today. Upon entering, I entered the world of hell where slaves were game-ended right in front of me. 
Exploring around, I saw a woman selling slop, which will have to be my food while I'm here. Giving me a lovely dose of radiation each time I eat it. No wonder why they look like this. I spoke to Medea about the plan and she tells me to go into the mill to find iron ingots. The guard intruded on our conversation and was pleased about me getting ingots as it seems like it would be a death sentence. Which it might be considering that I have no weapons to defend myself. They envy our victories in the struggle for freedom! I embarked on my mission to collect iron ingots. The big problem is that I have no protection, and I don't think I can find any weapons either that I could use. Spoke to Emmett, who wished my death. Tell you what, <clears throat> why don't you do me a favor and get killed close to the door? That way, I don't have to walk so far to get your corpse, eh? The first thing I did was to turn on the protectrons nearby, as they might help me with the trogs. I'm hoping that these robots actually protect me a little bit. Because these... I don't have any weapons <laughs> right now. <laughs> For God's sake! I ran around like a madman trying to find 10 steel ingots, dodging enemies all over the place. I found three grenades in an ammo box and I knew I had to get out. I used what I had left of a stealth boy and ran for my life. Oh no. Go, 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 go. God, the, the stealth boys are just so useless sometimes. Just the worst timing possible. Luckily, I'm really, really fast. Okay, I'm nearly there. Nearly there. Get down the stairs. Come on, boy. I know you're eating at the same time. Oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> oh my God. Go, go, go. I would be crazy to go back in there without any sort of weapon, but I don't think I have any choice. When heading back to Medea, I got some tasty slop and informed her that I got the 10 ingots. She tells me that Asher, leader of the pit, is about to make a speech about fighting in the ring for freedom. I ask my loyal workers, who among you is prepared to fight for your freedom? This man here will fight in the hole. Come on, Asher. Send someone to the hole who actually stands a chance. Very well, Medea. If that is the will of the workers, then this man shall be their champion. Yep. I'm totally ready to fight with no weapons. I prayed that they had something for me that I could use when I got to the hole, but unfortunately, I couldn't use anything in here. So you know what that means? Yep, I gotta go back into the mill and hopefully find enough grenades or a flamer to take on these people. Inside a building, there were a lot of trogs. Why is there so many of you? Yeah, I'm just gonna leave. I'm leaving. I am leaving. Goodbye. You might want to run, my dude. <laughs> Left the mill and came back. It seems they were preoccupied with something else right now, so I can move forward. Continued exploring downstairs, hoping for more loot, where I spotted a flamer and a few wild men having issues with trogs. So I used a valuable grenade as he had a flamer and then put a grenade in a poor man's pocket. <laughs> Took some steel ingots and I ran. Now I'm ready to fight in the hole. I took out some random slavers. Two people called the Bear Brothers, which I'm very happy that I was fighting. As one of them had five grenades on them. But I did need to rest as I was pretty injured with no health supplies. The last fight I had to beat was Gruber, which was nice and simple. I threw a grenade or a couple of them. I've now been awarded my freedom. With my last impacts, I fixed up my body and took my stuff back, which means that I can now use my flame sword again. Spoke to the local raiders, and honestly, I think they are just in bad condition as much as the slaves were looking at their faces. I then headed into Asher's big building, where he sits on top of the building complex. A guard expresses concern that Werner is back and talking between slaves to form up a civil war. After his conversation ended, we spoke about why I'm here because he seems to have off vibes about me. I pretended that I only spoke to Werner once and that I didn't really like him. Then you know he's not to be trusted. He wants me to stop him as he's causing a lot of problems in the pit. And of course I said no, because he has the cure to free the slaves. And before he could continue, he got interrupted as the revolt has started. I looked around his place and stepped into a lab. Asher's wife welcomed me in and showed me her daughter. Putting two and two together, it seemed that the daughter is the cure and that they are working on the cure without hurting Marie. 
the child. I said that was mine now, and she angrily explained a point that Werner isn't going to get the cure any faster without negative consequences. She's kind of got a point there. So I gave back the baby to her. Yeah, that's what I thought. Luckily, the raiders didn't turn on me because of this. I even went into Asher's room where I listened to a couple of holotapes that were meant for future Marie. He explains that he wasn't proud to have slaves, but he saw it as a necessary evil to fix up the pit. Does that excuse all the evil that he's been doing here? Probably not, but more importantly though, there is no way I can go up against this many raiders, and those poor slaves with no armor and just an axe are gonna get mowed down. So if I have any chance of survival, it is to stop Werner. I headed outside where the rebellion is in motion, and my theory was correct. Heading down to see Medea through the main factory, she didn't seem too happy about me changing sides. But considering they hid that the cure was a child from me, they get no sympathy from me. And while I'm on the evil side, I might as well threaten her to get what I need. She even gave me a holotape on where Werner's location is. I moved up to the mills again as that's where Werner was hiding out. How does this happen? I told him it's over and he got sliced in the face. I ran back to Asher again and he told me everything is now going back to normal. My reward was a prototype of the cure and ensures that the place will change once the cure has been properly made. Before leaving the pit, I really wanted Asher's armor. Maybe I should have sided with Werner, but to get his armor now, I now have to find 100 steel ingots. So off I went to go look for them. I am so done. After I found all 100, I got my new armor. With all the ingots given in, I have no other reason to stay here, so I left to go back to the capital wasteland. I grabbed all my stuff from the locker and headed back home, where I slept most of the day to fix some statuses. Moving to Revit City for some monotonous trading, Angela mentions that she will be getting married at 3pm tomorrow, which I will ensure to be there. Now for the next nine days, it was simply just exploration, mainly in the DC ruins, but not before seeing the wedding, of course. I brought Paladin Cross with me as a new companion because there is no way I'm doing the DC ruins by myself. The wedding turned out to be a success. Intrusive thoughts did get in the way a little. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, that never happened, okay? It went successfully. I even wore nice clothes for the occasion. And a few hours later, I was doing this. Oh, no way. No way is this real. I finally found it. It only took like 40 days. Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Oh, so happy. Explore Pennsylvania Avenue, which had plenty of shops to explore. The super mutants are being a bit of a problem as there are a bunch of super mutant masters and overlords everywhere. Day 90 was of course more exploring, which means looking into more interior shops and of course exploding more super mutants. Next stop was Tacoma Park and uh, it was a kind of a mistake to come here. Oh my God, he actually showed up and he actually did something. Once taken out, a radiation stalk came hailing down and I needed to get inside somewhere at some point. And while my vision was messy, I saw a funeral place. It had some unique ghouls inside and a coffin, which I thought was really cool. Underground had some security guards too, which I thought was even cooler. Right next to it was a nuclear themed club, which had nothing but skeletons with, um, pills and some fancy magazines. We headed down further into Tacoma industrial area where the Talon company were fighting some super mutants, took a few pot shots while they attacked each other and then cleared up the rest. This poor super mutant went all weird from a crit hit with a plasma gun.
then all that's left is a super mutant behemoth. All right, a rare encounter with a behemoth again. Tis the reason I brought this precious fat man with me. Let's see it. Go to the moon. And just one more, just in case. Of course, this area was quite big, so there was more shops to explore. There was a bookshop which had all your favorite books, like the National Geographic and crime detective stories. There was a music shop with no violin, but some electric guitars, a fancy dress shop, and a badass arcade shop with Fallout 2 on it, which I thought was really cool. Even had an antagonist gnome, which I will be taking home. The next location was another place in DC ruins, which I stopped by, but not explored properly because there were just so many super mutants. And after the initial wave was killed, I kept looking for more. Even the Enclave wanted a piece of the action and you know I had to do something special for them. I went to check out the last places left in this area and honestly was quite disappointed. Found this poor soul named Gibson who had a key which I never found where it led to. This comic book shop was pretty cool and had a unique gnome in there. With most of DC explored, it was time to take a look at the western part of DC ruins. Went into a comic book office building which had this one guy with an elite setup going on. I had to ruin it by throwing some rockets his way. Sorry man, I'm gonna have to ruin your party a little. Why is this ghoul friendly? Is it? Did he just turn on that machine? No way. Afterwards, I found this police station, which had a load of super mutants, of course. What's their obsession with police stations here? At the top was a riot room, which had some unique armor in there. Just down the road was a bank where I felt like I was playing payday for a second with the amount of safes in one room. As I've explored most of the random locations, it was time to tackle the big ones that I have left until this moment. First stop was to Evergreen Mills, the home of the biggest raider camp. Now before I go there, I wanted to go to Rakopolis, which was an unmarked location. And what I came across was really unexpected. It was the Enclave talking to a martyr. We all know what happens when we talk to the Enclave, so I had to intervene. After getting the last soldier, I tried speaking to her. Stay away from me. This is all your fault. Charming, I saved her life and she says this. Inside Rakopolis, I found a ghoul, a bobblehead, and a schematic. Then I noticed something bad. I was getting irradiated and I didn't have any rad away left. I must have left it all back at home. The staying in the cave did not protect me, so we had a big problem. I think once you hit 900 rads with a mod, it naturally goes up, so I needed a way to stop that. The only way I could think of is to run to Tenpenny Tower in hopes for rad away. I got there checking my statuses along the way, and as soon as I got to the doctor, this is what I was on. I couldn't have gotten any closer. With that diversion out of the way, I can finally go back to Evergreen Mills. I parkoured my way down and into the building. Damn, he's got a strong weapon. We finished clearing up the rest of the raiders and then slept for a few hours so we could attack Fort Bannister early morning. A squad of Brotherhood of Steel was waiting for orders outside Fort Bannister, but as a paladin of the Brotherhood of Steel, I convinced them to charge in with me to save some of the prisoners. Alpha squad, let's move out. Just thought I'd let everyone know that I'm here. It feels actually good using the weapons that I've been saving up all this time. Oh, it feels so good. Hey, he showed up again, but he's got no weapon. 
Did he just pick up an LMG? Oh, you are so useless. Actually, this kind of hurts. Did my nuclear anomaly actually work this time? With Fort Bannister out of the way, I made my way to the last location, which is another satellite dish. Let's hope it does not end the same way that it did before. High water trousers. Oh my god! What? What the fuck? What? No! Oh no, no. I'm clearly dreaming after that. I'm just gonna go to bed. As soon as I woke up, the Enclave came to interrupt my sleep. I turned on the activation code and watched missiles rain down from the sky. I headed back home to update my bobblehead collection and I told Cross to wait here because I was going to the safest place in the game, the Deathclaw Sanctuary. Just the footlocker at the entrance had some decent gear to lure you into this place. Now, Deathclaws aren't too bad if your flamer is doing something like 700 damage, but what was really interesting is the bodies found in this place. This outcast guy had babe, babe magnets and at the furthest part of the cave, you can get a unique mini Gatling gun which looks amazing, but unfortunately I cannot use. It was still worth going in to risk my life for um, a mini nuke and a babe magnet glasses. We're reaching the end of our journey and there's still a few things left I wanted to do, mainly grabbing the best gun in the game. Now throughout this playthrough, I have been grabbing Keller Holler tapes to unlock an armory. Currently I'm missing one, and the last one is found in a shack nearby the gas station. Now once I got that, it was time to head towards the National Guard Armory Base. This was somewhere I haven't really explored yet, so it was a bit of a journey to get there. The Enclave tried to stop me. Multiple super units attacked me and even nearly killed me from an overlord. Paladin Cross took a burst like a champion. Raiders got in the way too, but we eventually reached the base. This whole place was protected by guard bolts. I had to go through the entire base, which was an absolute pain. Once I've turned on the switch from the other side, the bunker doors open, and after whacking a sentry bot, I was finally in. There was a bunch of ammo and a bobblehead to be found here, but this wasn't it. Behind this door is the Keller Bunker. When opening the bunker, there was a glowing one, assuming that this was one of the family members. And finally reached what I came for, the experimental MIRV. This thing shoots out seven nukes at once. Is it overkill? Oh yeah, it definitely is, but it's also mega cool to use. I left the armory and headed back to Megaton to sort out my inventory one last time. Now on the last day, I wanted to take out every enemy in the Capitol building and to take it back for the Brotherhood of Steel. So I got Paladin Cross ready with all the best gear and I also brought my unique Fat Man with me with everything else to make this final push.
Just like that, Cross and I took out every living thing inside the Capitol building. This is the last time this is happening. I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> oh my god. With the Capitol building conquered, I think it was time to finish one last thing. The last super mutant behemoth is in the metro street and with one final blast this is how i spent 100 days in fallout 3. i hope you enjoyed the video and i really appreciate you watching the entire thing if you do enjoy my content please leave a like or subscribe and hopefully i'll see you in another video